This meal was so good. Here I am frying up some seasoned chicken tenderloins in the pan, getting those all cooked up. And I have already in my crock pot cooked these pork spare ribs. I didn't want them falling apart, but I wanted them tender. I'm gonna finish those off in the oven. In my oven right now, I have some baked beans and some cheesy hash browns, and I am frying up some bird's eye okra. Here's a look at dinner. We had the fried okra, and here are the barbecue ribs, all fallen off the bone delicious, the cheesy hash browns, and here's the barbecue chicken. I finished that off in the oven also with some barbecue sauce. This is fresh lettuce from Gunner and Abigail's garden. She brought a big salad. That was so good. And we feasted. Not only was this a feast for the tummy, a feast for the eyes. This is Gunner's plate. Looked so good. I said, Gunner, let me film that. And then here's my plate. We had such a good dinner, dinner this tonight, night. We have a sirloin steak. James grilled up for us on our grill outside. I've got some cottage cheese with lots of pepper. And these are the great value potato wedges. Delicious dinner for tonight. All right, I'm gonna be making some pizza burgers today. This is basically what a pizza burger is. It's just a hamburger bun opened up and you use that as your quote unquote crust. And so basically you top it just like you would a pizza. We used to have these at school and I've made these through the years for uh, my sons when they were growing up. And I occasionally make them now to take to our church fellowship meal and that is what I'm doing today. So they are always are a crowd pleaser. So same concept for um, bagel pizzas or English muffin pizzas, only these use hamburger buns and they're called pizza burgers. So I had some hamburger buns left from a cookout. I put those in the freezer and that's what I'll be using today. So I'm rounding up my sausage here. I just happen to have these sausage patties on hand. So I'm just going to crumble these as they fry with my twist and chop. And uh, you've seen me use that tool plenty of times. And then I'll just put pizza sauce and um, sausage, cheese, and pepperoni. I'm not going to do anything else because I want to keep them simple. That way, if you don't like onions or peppers or things like that, um, that won't be a problem. You've also heard me say that I usually make my own pizza sauce, but lately I just haven't been taking the time to do it. So, just picked up this can of Chef Boyardee pizza sauce and it'll be just fine. We have the bottom part of the pizza burgers assembled. They are topped with the um, sausage that I browned up. I went ahead and mixed that in with the pizza sauce. I would rather do it that way than just have crumbly sausage rolling about. That way it kind of stays in one place. And then next we're going to go in with our mozzarella cheese and follow it up with pepper. Okay, ready for the oven. We've got the mozzarella cheese on top of the sausage and pizza sauce uh, mixture. And then I like the pepperoni on the very top because I like to see them. And then I just go in with a little bit of yellow cheese. I think this one is cheddar. Just kind of give it some color. Of course, you could add, you know, pepperoncinis, olives, mushrooms, green pepper, onion, whatever you like on your pizza, ham, pineapple, whatever floats your boat. But like I said, I want these to be kind of easy peasy, plain Jane that most people will like because I am taking these to a fellowship meal at church. All right, so they'll go in the oven. I'm just gonna bake these a little bit today, enough to kind of warm them through to where the cheese melts. And then tomorrow, about 10 minutes before we eat them, I'll pop them in the oven and bring them back up to temperature and um, they'll be ready to go. All right, here we go, looking good and smelling good. I went back in after I pulled them out of the oven and sprinkled just a little bit of Italian um, seasoning on top just some dry Italian just to give it a little pop of green and then I sprinkled just a little bit of Parmesan cheese and so I'm gonna leave these on the pan let them cool completely I'm just 
gonna cover it. I'll take this whole pan tomorrow, after it's been in the fridge, of course, this evening. And then tomorrow, I will pop this in the oven at church right before it's time to eat and let this warm through. And these will fly off the pan, I'm pretty sure. Okay, I browned up the beef short ribs and now they are in my crock pot. I don't have any crock pot liner, so they're just going in as is. James seasoned these up really well. I think he used garlic salt, onion salt, and the Zatarain's garlic and herb. So I basically just seared the outsides, got them in the crock pot, and then um, I just threw in the pan after I removed the ribs, some diced tomato, sliced onion, and some minced garlic. So, these are going to go in the crock pot, and I really don't know what else we're going to add to them. This is just a play it by ear on this. I We looked up a couple recipes we're loosely following, but um, James just wanted to be able to get some good broth out of the bones from these beef short ribs. Okay, I've decided to add a little bit of tomato paste, maybe a heaping tablespoon, and I'm going to add this can of beefy mushroom to my short ribs. This will kind of be a hearty broth that's going to go along with the um, natural beef goodness that's going to come out of those ribs. And this will kind of be like a hearty, probably very flavorful um, broth. So we're going to get those in there and let it start cooking together. Okay, here are the beef short ribs. This is what they're looking like now. I've added in one large potato chunked up and it is just smelling good the sauce is pretty thick already but i'll probably add some uh, like cornstarch and water make a little slurry to thicken that up so basically it'll just be some beef and potatoes and kind of a tomatoey based sauce so that's what that's looking like and then i was going to show you a little trick if you ever open up a little can of tomato paste and don't need the whole thing just spoon it into a little Ziploc bag, this is a sandwich size, and flatten it out, get all the air out, and throw it in your freezer. And then what happens is it just peels right out of the baggie, or you can just break off little pieces. So if you just need a little bit, just it just breaks because it's frozen, and you can throw it in whatever dish you might need it for. So that is a little trick for tomato paste. Well, hello everyone. I'm gonna show you what I've cooked up here in this pot. You see the red flakes are red chili, uh, little pepper flakes. But I decided to cook up some lima beans. I have never cooked lima beans um, just from the dry beans before. I've cooked them, you know, maybe frozen or from the can, but I just wanted to do a bag of dry lima beans. And I figured I'd do them in my crock pot, but I had it all day, so I thought I would just cook them on the stove. So I basically just rinsed them and put fresh water back in, and I just cooked them low and slow for about three, maybe two and a half hours, three hours this morning. Then I turned them off and put the lid on, and now I am just heating them up again, and I'm sure by the time, I'll probably cook them about 30 more minutes, some of this liquid will cook down. And you guys, they taste so good. I seasoned them with um, pink Himalayan sea salt, black pepper, a little bit of dry chicken base. I cooked three whole garlic cloves in with it, put in some red pepper flakes, and it tastes really good. I'm also getting ready to put some cornbread in the oven, so I will show you that. Okay, today I wanted this Jiffy Corn Muffin Mix, and instead of muffins, I'm just doing it in my little pie plate. Um, some meals I just like a sweeter cornbread and so when I do that I just use the Jiffy and so I usually have those in my pantry for corn casserole or for occasions like this so I have one box I'm gonna put that in the oven and then um, I will show you what else we're putting with this meal here in just a bit okay for another side for dinner tonight I bought a bag of coleslaw mix at Walmart just because I wanted to make some coleslaw. I don't do that much, nor do I eat coleslaw much, but I just thought that sounded good. So, 
I will link the recipe. Well, actually I'm just gonna type out what I ended up using to make this. So instead of mayonnaise, I used the whipped dressing, which basically is, this is the Aldi version of Miracle Whip. And then this is a yummy ingredient. For some reason I just thought I wanted to squeeze some of that in there. I ended up going back and adding some more, so I think I maybe have about a fourth a cup, maybe a little under, of honey mustard. Oh my goodness, you guys, that really gives it a yummy taste. And then I added in some green onions. And the rest of it was um, a little bit of stevia, maybe a teaspoon, about a teaspoon of lemon juice. I used about a teaspoon of Bragg's apple cider vinegar it called for white vinegar and I have that but I just thought I would use the Bragg's and I think that's about it you guys oh I, I also added in uh, the Trader Joe's onion salt just a little bit of that and it tastes delicious so I'm gonna get this in the refrigerator so it'll be good and set up for dinner Here is the finished plate. We have the lima beans, the homemade coleslaw, a piece of the sweet cornbread, and the beef short rib with some cooked potatoes and some green onions on the side. It's steaming up. Looks delicious. Kind of an odd combo for what I normally make, but it all sounded good and I know it's going to be. All right, so in this little packet are two chili dogs. And when I grew up, I grew up in Anderson, Indiana, and there's a place called Jean's Hot Dog and Root Beer Stand. It's still there. We try our best to get there um, when it's open during the summer because it's wonderful. But your chili dogs come out so um, just perfectly soft, like the bun, it's like steamed. So if I'm making a full packet of hot dogs, I put the hot dogs on the buns after the hot dogs are cooked, and then I put them all back in the um, bag that the hot dogs come in and then I close it up and I let it steam. I do the same thing with my hamburgers But I'm not doing the whole pack So I just made my own little pack and I've got my chili dogs in there So I'm gonna show you those real quick. All right, check it out So I put my hot dog right off the grill some mustard some chili and shredded cheese Closed it up and now it's all super warm the buns are kind of they feel a little steamy and then I'm going to put some slaw that I made yesterday for dinner. So I'm going to put some of that on top of my chili dogs. Now, if this were really taste like jeans, hot dog and river stand, there would be um, horseradish in the slaw. And it's kind of spicy, but I don't have any horseradish cream, and I usually always do. But slaw dogs for tonight, that is what we're having. All right, so there you have it, two slaw dogs. And I'm telling you, something about summertime, I just can't get enough hot dogs and hamburgers on the grill. So you are gonna see this in my what's for dinner. Pretty often I'm just telling you that because wintertime, crock pot, soup, that kind of thing. Summertime belongs to the grill. And James is not a huge grilled chicken fan, so we eat a lot of steak, hot dogs, and hamburgers in the summer. Yum, yum. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this week of What's for Dinner. We had some delicious food. Stay tuned for the next one.